Hey guys, this weekend I saw The Hobbit, directed by Peter Jackson, starring Ian McKellen, Martin Freeman, and Richard Armitage. This is With a K Review, I'm Victor, let's get to it. So when I heard The Hobbit was going to be made into a movie, I was kind of excited because the first three Lord of the Rings movies were really great. Peter Jackson actually set the level for what epic style filmmaking was supposed to be. The Hobbit, however, is and is not what we expected from Peter Jackson. Now just as a side note here, all the characters that played in the first three Lord of the Rings movies, some of them do make a return in this movie. I don't want to give all of them away because it's kind of neat how they're introduced, but they're all played by the original actors that played it in the first three movies. So in The Hobbit, the younger version of Bilbo is played by Martin Freeman. Now, now, a lot of people remember him from the Sherlock series where he played Dr. Watson. I remember him mostly from the 2005 movie, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Also in the movie, Gandalf returns and Ian McKellen plays him. Now here's a small little side note about Gandalf's character. Ian McKellen was not actually the first actor who was offered the role of Gandalf. It was actually Sean Connery who was offered the role first, but he turned it down because, quote, he didn't understand the material that was being presented to him, so he decided to go to do League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and we all know how that shining gem turned out. Now, the actual adventure in this movie is and is not what we expected, like I said before. The Hobbit is like the other movies because you do have a band of characters that are fighting against an evil force. So in this movie we have Bilbo and Gandalf going with a group of dwarves led by Thorin to take back their kingdom that was stolen from them by the dragon Smog. Here the evil force is split up into two pieces, the first one being the white orc that is hunting Thorin and a secondary evil that is hinted out throughout the entire movie. Now the character Thorin in this movie is actually played by Richard Armitage and when I looked on his IMDB page I realized that he's been in a few American movies but for the most part he's been in a lot of stuff that I haven't seen. He's been in MI5, the series Robin Hood, and just recently in a series called Strike Back on Cinemax. And in short, he actually almost steals this entire movie. However, he does pull back just enough to allow Bilbo and Gandalf to interact with him and the other dwarves in this movie, which allowed for stories and other sub-stories. Let's face it, after two hours and 45 minutes, I think we're all going to enjoy some stories and some other sub-stories so we don't get bored. Now, The Hobbit in general is one of Peter Jackson's best-looking movies in the Lord of the Rings universe. I got to see it in the 24 frames per second, and it was actually still pretty good. You still get all the sweeping views of Middle-earth and the large-scale battles, but that's really not what this movie is about. Those are in there, and they're really good, but this is more of a character-driven movie than anything else. Now I have to say the best visual part in this movie is Gollum, and yes he does return in this movie if you've read the book, but the character Gollum, when he was on screen, even though I saw it at the second lowest frame rate, I swear, I swear, he was actually there at one point. I actually thought Andy Serkis, who voices and does the mocap for Gollum, was actually on the screen at one point in some kind of like fantastic suit. It was that real and it was that good. Now The Hobbit is still an epic film. It's done in the same style as the rest of the Lord of the Rings movies, but it's done on a much smaller scale. You have all these things, you have the sweeping views, you have everything that you would expect from a Lord of the Rings movie from Peter Jackson. But this movie really takes a smaller look at the characters that are presented to you. Thorin, Gandalf, and Bilbo all interact with each other and the other dwarves, and it makes this movie really fun to watch. Even though it's 2 hours and 45 minutes, I'm still going to give this movie a 4K review because it takes that smaller view while still in inducing all the other epicness of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Do not see this movie in 3D. I saw it in 3D and it's kind of interesting in 3D, but it's not really needed and I don't think you need to spend the money to enjoy it to go when you see it. Thanks guys for watching my show and I really do appreciate all the viewers and subscribers that I have. Hopefully everybody enjoyed Dance Victor Dance and when I get to 50 subscribers, I'm actually gonna have a special challenge to a certain person out there and I'm hopefully I'll get to 50 and you'll get to see what it is but never forget if you don't like what you're watching you can always turn it off thanks guys